words, if you like. Brackets or parentheses. Indices are also known as exponents, yeah, or powers, yeah. And then you've got division and multiplication. Is it you can do them in any order? Yeah. Okay, so what's the rule if not? Left to right, yeah? If it's multiplication, division, it's got to be left to right. Yeah. Um, addition and subtraction, does that actually matter? No. No, no. no because if you add, it's going to be bad. As long as you don't swap the numbers around for subtraction, you're okay. Are you sure? <laughs> Maybe something to look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe something to think about. Um, now we've just got to be able to do this, instead of us with our whole numbers, we've just got to be able to do it with fractions. But you're good, right? You know how to add with fractions. Yeah. You know how to multiply and divide by, with fractions. So we're, we're, all, we're all good. So I thought I'd just go through one example with you, and then you can carry on yourself. So based on the work that you've just been doing, some of you will be able to explain other things better than others, but we should be all good. So this example is three quarters plus two thirds divided by five sixths. Okay? So, is there any order in which we need to do this? Anyone want to make a statement, Jackson? Okay, so that's the first thing, isn't it? Using the uh, bed mass thing, we have to do the division first. Is that right? Okay, so let's do that first. Let's do two thirds divided by five sixths. Uh, who would like to sort of G? Okay, no, okay. I was thinking before that you were doing that, you were doing multiple. Don't get me. When I read it, did you multiply? Okay. I read it, Ah, no, so that's addition and subtraction, oh, or multiplication, but when it's multiplication or division and addition and subtraction, then you have to do the multiplication division first. Yeah? So we have to do this bit, the division bit first. Okay? Is, is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Do you want to, George, do you want to explain what you do here? Okay, so we're going to change this. So we're going to keep this as two thirds, but we're going to multiply by flip this fraction and make it six fifths. Okay, what's this called, by the way? Really, I know I've been looking at some some of your work. We, we, we could flip the fraction if we're not using very good vocabulary, or we could say find the reciprocal of the fraction. Okay, so the reciprocal. Now, um, I could do the multiplication now, but is there anyone that feels comfortable with let's simplify first? Yeah. Go for it. Well, I kind of forgot how to do it, but uh, don't you do. Uh, no? Emma? The two and the five can't simplify, no? The three and the six can. Okay, so this three divided by three would give me a one, and the six divided by three would give me a two. So my, my new problem is now two whole ones multiplied by two fifths, okay? Um, and then we're going to do that as the multiplication. So, how do I multiply a fraction? Who? Okay. Yeah. Two times two, and one times five, and we end up with four fifths. So, the four fifths is going to replace this bit. Okay? 
So now I'm going to rewrite my question just so we don't get confused, all right, and start making mistakes. I'm going to rewrite this now as the problem it now is. So it's now three quarters, because I'm taking this one, and it's plus four fifths. So that's my new problem. All right. Do you want me to pause? Yeah. I'll pause. Okay, Des, go. So you got it. Can you use that perfect uh, vocabulary for me? Good, so we're going to find the lowest common multiple of 4 and 5, which is 20. Happy it's 20? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then you can multiply the numerator and denominator by what number you get 20? Yeah, so how we get to 20, yeah. So four needs to get multiplied by five. And the three needs to get multiplied by five. So the same thing. Okay. And then the five needs to get multiplied by four. Yeah. And then five, four needs to get multiplied by three. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my new question is. Uh, it's Karen? Just to, before we go any further. So we're all good. All right, that's um, an improper fraction. Is there anything wrong with an improper fraction? No. We could try and simplify it first. Now, does it simplify? No. 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 I'm looking at it and going 31. 31 strikes me as being a. Oh, prime number. So 31 being a prime number means that the only thing it can divide by is itself, 31 or 1. And 20 definitely doesn't divide by 31, so we know we're simple. Now, I know what Kieran wants to do. Kieran wants to now rewrite it as a mixed number. But before we do, do we have to? No. No. Unless we're asked for it, you don't have to. But let's do it anyway. So. Why do you do that? Why? Just to see what, how much more space you have a higher the numerator than the denominator. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm being annoying. Race is different. Uh, because when you get 20 and 31, in the denominator, you get the numerator, then you get, you bring it down to a number that Okay, I think you get you're not quite where I want you to be with that. You right, Snow? Mm -hmm. Des, you have a go. Why? Because if you're gonna make it into an improper into a mixed number, you're gonna have to find how many times it can go into straight form because you need to know like what your whole number is. Okay, yeah, almost there. Then we're definitely getting close. G? I think, well, it is just useful to do that because you're going to have to do it. So it's 20 to the denominator, and yeah. then you've got 31 to the numerator. Yeah. It's a piece of the cake. 
Ya. Ya. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's it, right? It's exactly that. So you're right, we do subtract a 20, but we would actually subtract as many 20s as I can because, as G correctly said, 20 is the denominator, so that's how many pieces I need to make a whole one, right? So that means I've got... If I take 20 out of 31, that means I've got 20 twentieths and another 11 twentieths, right? So that's like putting it back into an addition. Do you look to that? But instead of doing that, 20 twentieths we can write as one whole one and 11 twentieths, right? Now it's, it's actually quite good to realize that it is an addition we just don't write it as an addition because 1 plus 11 twentieths we would write as 1 and 11 twentieths okay. yes. just write it like that okay. yeah so you, you got, you, you're good with that so that is the answer to this whole question nice equals 1 and 11 twentieths. We did it in two steps. So I, I think you're good, I think. What we've just done, by the way, just to show, addition is the same as subtraction. You just subtract at the end, right? Division's clever because to do division, you actually have to do multiplication, so you do both. So that means you're all good with both of those things, which means we're all good with all four of them, right? And we did a bit of simplification. And we did some mixed numbers. So this example has got everything you need there. So over to you. This, in your book, that was a bit of a mess. We got the third one, but this, I don't know what went wrong with that printing. So you're going to be looking at practice five now. OK. Uh, so that's page 192, and you can go through these questions to start with, all right? Showing all your working, please, as neat and tidy as you can. I don't want to just see scribbles over your page in random places. Um, 192, okay? And what I'll do is I'll put my notes back on the boards. Okay, if you've not written down what we were just doing, that final bit, you can write that down. Recording. Let's, um, first off then, we can just, because it's multiplication, it's all multiplication, we could just do three times two times five, all over. 10 times 9 times 7 and get the answer, right? We could do that, but we would then need to simplify the answer. So that is fine, but it might be easier to simplify first, Simone. Yeah? Now, do you remember, guys, if we can write this like this, I could equally write it as 2 times... Three times five, swap those round because it's all multiplication. And ten times nine times seven. Right? No, there are lots of options, but I'm just saying that's what we do. So what I can do is I can cancel any of the numerators with any of the denominators because it's all multiplication. So for instance, the three and the nine will cancel to one and three. And then I'm actually going to go with the five and the ten. So the five and the ten cancel to make one and two. So now I've got one over two times two over three times one over seven. Same question. And it is much easier, right? That's why 
simplifying beforehand is easy, then we don't need a calculator. Because this is 1 times 2 times 1 is just 2 <laughs> over 2 times 3 is, well, I'm going to do 3 times 7 is 21, times 2 is 42. Okay. And I can simplify again by dividing by 2. Now, let me just ask you this, guys. Because I can divide by 2 and make 1 over 21, does that suggest I could have simplified further before doing it? Probably. No. Well, actually, it, it has, if the answer can simplify, I actually could have simplified beforehand. That's what it's telling me. All right? And you might notice that this is fine. I, I made it easy enough to do in my head. Absolutely no problem. But I could have. You notice the two and the two? I could have actually done that with that and made one and... So then it was one over one multiplied by one over three multiplied by one over seven. And I definitely get an easy one then. Nice and simple, yeah? Whereas, if I didn't simplify at all, look, I'd have had 2 times 3 is 6, times 5 is 30, all over, 9 times 7 is 63, so that's 630, which is fine. I could have then simplified to 3 over 63 by dividing by 10, not counting crossing a zero out, although that's what it looks like we're doing, we're actually dividing by 10, and then divide by 3, and miraculously you get, which is nice. So either way, we can end up at the same answer, but so it doesn't matter whether you simplify first, whether you simplify all the way first, or whether you simplify right at the end. Doesn't matter as long as you get to the right answer. But does that help you with what we need to do?